Question 6. A student does an experiment to determine the percentage of copper in an alloy. An alloy is a mixture of metals, so you've got copper in with a mixture of other metals. The student reacts 985 milligrams of the alloy with concentrated nitric acid to form a solution. All the copper in the alloy reacts. So 985 milligrams. Let's get that into grams first of all. So we've got 985 milligrams then to convert a lower unit value milligrams up into a higher unit value of grams i divide by a thousand so 985 divided by a thousand 0.985 grams i like it to be in grams because i'm going to do something with moles and moles equals mass divided by mr and the mass has got to be in grams it says it's in 250 centimeter cubed of water or 0.25 decimeter cubed of water if you like so taking 25 centimeter cubed and dividing by a thousand, 250 centimetre cubed of water, or 0.25 decimetre cubed of water, but then it, it takes 25 centimetre cubed sample out of the 250. So it's taken a tenth, a tenth of the solution. So I'm going to convert it back at the end. I'm now working with a tenth of the solution. So any calculations I do are a tenth of the amount of the original before I took the sample out. I need to remember that. So it says here, it transfers, shakes it, transfers. 25 centimetre cubed sample uses 9 centimetre cubed of 0.08 mole per decimetre cubed sodium thiosulfate. So I've got a volume and we've got a concentration. Concentration equals moles divided by volume, but the volume is going to be in decimetre cubed. So to get centimetre cubed up into high unit value of decimetre cubed, I divide by a thousand, so that's 0.009. So concentration equals moles divided by 0.009 decimetre cubed. Multiply the two together, I've now got the moles of sodium thiosulfate. Now you need to look carefully at this, react, this reaction here. Two moles of copper make one mole of iodine. Two copper make one mole of iodine. And then two moles of thiosulfate react with the one mole of iodine. So the one mole of iodine that's made here from the reaction of copper and iodide ions, the one mole of iodine reacts in the second step with the sodium thiosulfate. This is the sodium thiosulfate here. This is the thiosulfate from the sodium thiosulfate. And it reacts with one. So two moles of copper make one mole of iodine, and one mole of iodine reacts with two moles of sodium thiosulfate. So in this two-step reaction, two moles of copper react with two moles of sodium thiosulfate. So, if I've got, so the same number of copper and the same number of sodium thiosulfate react in this two-step reaction. So my number of moles of copper equals the same as the sodium thiosulfate, 0.0072. Um, so my number of moles of copper reacting is 0.0072, the same as the sodium thiosulfate. But remember, this is only a ten, in a tenth sample, so I need to multiply by 10. So my original sample, I had 0.0072 moles of copper. Now I know that the MR of copper is 63.5 from my periodic table, so moles is mass divided by MR, 63.5, multiply the two together, the mass of copper in there is 0.457 grams. Now then, 0.0457 grams, and the mass of the alloy, the mixture of copper with other metals, was 0.985 grams. So I've got 0.457 grams out of 0.985 in total. Divide the two, smaller by the larger, multiply by 100, 46.4. Let's just check my number of significant figures. Three significant figures. Three. Three three significant figures. Everything's to three significant figures. So 46.4% to three significant figures. Suggest two ways in which the student could reduce the percentage uncertainty. Well, the percentage uncertainty goes down if you take a bigger measurement of something. So there's less uncertainty of the measurements that you're taking are bigger. So how can I get a bigger volume of sodium thiosulfate used? I could use a lower concentration of it. A lower concentration of it would mean that I'd get a larger volume uh, for the same number of moles. The other way of doing it would be to use more of the alloy. So more of the alloy would need more of the sodium thiosulfate. So in both cases, I'm trying to get a larger reading of sodium thiosulfate either by using a lower concentration of sodium, sodium thiosulfate, so I need a larger volume to get the same number of moles, or a larger amount of alloy, and therefore I need a larger amount of sodium thiosulfate to react with it. 
state the role of the iodine in the reaction with sodium thiosulfate. Well, let's have a look what the iodine, uh, what, what's happening to it. I2 goes to I minus. It goes from zero oxidation state down to minus. It's been reduced. So if it's been reduced in a redox reaction, the other substance must be oxidized. So this must be causing the sodium thiosulfate to be oxidized. It's an oxidizing agent. Let's just check it's been oxidized. Um, two minus left over. Uh, six, three lots of minus two oxygens in, in group six of the periodic table gains two electrons, two minus. Six, two minus, uh, three, two minuses is six minus. Two minus left over. So these two S2s must be uh, plus four. They must be in plus two each. Here, S4O6, six, six, two minus is 12 minus. Uh, two minus left over. So these four S's uh, must be a total of 10, 2.5. So yes, it's increased from oxidation state 2 up to oxidation state 2.5. It's been oxidized, so the I2 must be an oxidizing agent. Give the full electron configuration of copper 2 ion. Well, copper is, two, is um, 29, so it's got an atomic number of 29. If it's a copper 2 ion, it's 2 plus, lost 2 electrons. I need 27 electrons. Uh, the S electrons are lost before the Ds, so I've got 2, 2, 6, 2, 6, 9, 3Ds to make 27 electrons in a copper 2 plus iron. Copper 1 iodides is white solid. Explain why the transition metal might be white or why um, a solid may be white. It means that the metal in there hasn't got any 3D electrons or it hasn't got any 3D electrons, so it's got a full 3D electron level. So if it's got a full 3D electron level or hasn't got any 3D electrons, uh, it cannot absorb visible light. What happens is that any 3D electrons can absorb visible light. They get promoted within the 3D shells. That's called a process called transition. Um, but because it hasn't got um, uh, copper 1 iodide, Copper 1 iodide would um, have one extra electron. It would have 3d10. So uh, it would have not 29 electrons like copper. It would have 28. So instead of copper 2 only having 27, it would have 28. It would be 3p6, 3d10. It would have a full d energy level. So if it's got full d energy level or no uh, d electrons at all, they cannot um, absorb visible light. They cannot have any uh, 3D transitions. Iodine vaporizes easily. Calculate the volume in centimetres cubed that 5 grams of iodine vapour occupies 185 degrees C, 100 kilopascals, gas constant. I've got a gas constant, so I need PV equals NRT. Straight away, though, I'm mindful of the fact that that's in kilopascals. I need to get that into pascals. Higher unit value kilopascals down into pascals, then I'm multiplying by a thousand, so that's a hundred thousand pascals. Um, I've got 185 degrees C, that needs to be in Kelvin by adding 273 to it to get it into Kelvin. And I've got five grams of iodine, so I can work out the number of moles. Be mindful that iodine is in group seven, wants to gain one electron, so two iodine atoms come together and form a covalent bond, and iodine is I2. So I need to be mindful of all of those things. 100 kilopascals, 100,000 pascals, by turning a large unit value of kilopascals down into a low unit value of pascals, multiplied by 1,000. MR of I2, and I is a 126.9, need to multiply by 2. That's a common mistake there, that you don't remember that I2, iodine is I2. Uh, two iodine atoms pairing up to form a covalent bond to fill their outer energy level and become stable. 253.8 is the MR of iodine. Um, mass, uh, number of moles is mass divided by MR5. 5, 5 grams divided by 253.0.0197. Temperature, I've added 273 to the 185 degrees Celsius to form 458 Kelvin. Uh, and then I just put this into PV equals NRT. Pressure 100,000 uh, times volume, uh, which I don't know, which I'm trying to find out in centimetres cubed. Um, N is number of moles 0 0.0197. Gas constant 8.31458 Kelvin. Multiply those uh, all together. V is uh, the, the product of each of those three numbers divided by 100,000. 0.0075 metres cubed. 
So remember, volume in PV equals NRT is meter cubed. To get it down into decimeter cubed, you multiply by 1,000. So we multiply by 1,000, 0 0.750 decimeter cubed. But it wants it in centimeter cubed. So decimeter cubed into the next unit value down is multiplied by 1,000 again. So it's 750 centimeter cubed. Are we okay to three significant figures? Yes, three, 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 three. Everything else is three significant figures, so 750 centimeter cubed.